You too, what's good? We back with another one, man. Hey, I'm a little bit under the weather. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, boys. I almost ain't wanna make this video, man, but I gotta get it done for the people. All right, so <laughs> with that being said, man, my boy uh, Filthy, man, I'm gonna put his, uh, his at down here. But yeah, man, my boy Filthy sent me some crazy loops, man. So I figured, hey, we about to cook up on these things gonna get a little video out man so i think today what we gonna do is showcase some drums man i'm sure y'all boys how to get that bounce how to get them drums hitting just how you want them to you know what i'm saying so yeah without further ado let's get into this cook up oh i almost forgot to tell y'all to like and subscribe man don't forget it don't forget it don't forget it man like and subscribe if your head get the bottom you know the rules let's go All right, so we in FL with it, man. Like I said, we got the loop from my dog, Filthy. I'll let y'all hear what that sound like. That's nasty, man. Yeah, I like that. So you already know I had to boot that thing up, man. So I went ahead, I started out, I pitched it down 100 cents. So you can see here. So that put it at, uh, D minor. So that's what we're working with there. So let's get into these drums a little bit, man. So I'm gonna turn off all the drums and we're gonna go one by one. So I started out with the hi-hat and the snare. Nothing too crazy there, two step on the hi-hat. You see here, what I did was I played with the velocity of every other hi-hat. So I brought it down so that it has just kind of a natural bounce. Because the tempo was so high, I didn't want to have a lot going on with my hi-hats. I wanted to keep it a little bit simple. So that's why I'm just doing a simple two-step with the velocity bounce there. Now on the snare, we got a little bit uh, freaky with it at the end, but it's still not anything too crazy. Just for some bounce there. We did it again here. And then we got the snare roll. Nothing crazy. Yeah, it'd be making a rap. All right. So yeah, we added another uh, snare on top of that just to layer it and give it another little separate bounce here in these spots. So this is what that sounds like. Real simple, man. Nothing too crazy there. All right. So next, we have this open hat. And I'm just using this open hat as an accent. <clears throat> You'll really be able to notice when uh, the 808 comes in where I, why I have it hitting in these spots, but. You know what I'm saying? You kinda already hear it in your head, the 808 going boom, boom. So we have that open hat to accent that. After that, we added this uh, laser effect. This little sound here, like that young Jeezy. Or that Boston Richie, depending on how old you are. So yeah, man, that adds a nice little bounce to it. And with these perks, I just like to randomize my velocity by pressing Alt-R. Playing with this velocity knob here. And just to give it like a more realistic feeling. So boom, next. A simple crash, man, nothing crazy going on there. So that's real simple. So I think I'm gonna go through these other perks first before I even get into the 808. So we have another open hat, more of a triangle sound. And we got this uh, like rim perk. And we had that kind of playing off the other perk. So let me turn off the other percussion and then you can just hear that real quick. So we have all the sounds just kind of bouncing off of each other. Uh, once one finishes, another one comes in right underneath it, you know, and that's called syncopation. I described it in one of my other videos before a little bit, but 
syncopation is just when them sounds are playing off of each other it keeps the track moving it keeps the listener kind of engaged man so even without the clapping the, and the hi-hats going which is your rhythm we still have a good bounce just with the percussion so you feel me so yeah once we add that back in there yeah So yeah, this is going to be a quick video today, but I just had to get this in for y'all, man. So yeah, let's get into the 808. I got a little bit, uh, I went a little bit different with the 808 here. I decided to use two 808s and kind of play off of each other with this. A good example of a song that does that is uh, on Future's last album, there's a song he had with ESTG. I think it's called um, Chicken. I think that's the name of it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... Uh, yeah, so that kind of was the inspiration here. So I started out with this uh, Spins 808. And let me just actually just have the 808 going with the melody so y'all can hear it a little bit better. Boom. Real simple bounce. So what I did here, we're just on the root note of the melody, which was D after I pitched it down. We're leaving a lot of space here. Uh, me personally, I like to give the artist a lot of room to really say what they got to say on the beat. So I like to kind of space my 808s a little bit more than maybe some other people. So I left it real open on this 808 pattern. And I also knew I was going to have that other 808 coming in behind it. So on the second half here, same thing. We left it real open. But before we hit this next part here, I added a slide. So, so if you want to add a slide in your 808 like that, all you need to do is put down a note. You double click that note and you go to this little triangle icon here. And that creates a slide. Can y'all see that Xbox invite on my shit? Man, I'm gonna have to edit that out. But that's how you make a slide right there. And then you just move it to where you want it to be at. So I move mine here so that it slides up and then into this sand, this next note here. You can also have it slide down. Oh, that's kind of hard. I'm not going to lie. I think I might leave it like that. I think I might leave it like that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to keep it like that. So boom. Next, I added in this uh, Yeet 808. I got this out of, uh, I think, Rio's, Rio's kit. If y'all don't have that, go download this on his channel somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is what that sounds like with the other 808. Oops. After that man we just added in this kick on top of that 808 just to give it some emphasis so that's what that sounds like we just have it hitting on the main 808 that spins that we had so. yeah i can rock with that i can rock with that so yeah man what we're doing with the kick, I have the velocities turned all the way up down here, as you can see. And for my 808 as well, I just like to have my velocities turn all the way up on the 808s because I wanted to really hit. Same with this uh, 808, we just have the velocity all the way up. 
So yeah, man, all together, this is what them drums is sounding like. Yeah, so that's hard, man. So next we're going to get into the mixing side of things. All right, man. So first things first, we're going to put an EQ on this uh, melody here so we can really get them drums coming through right. All right, so when I mix my drums, I like to start with the loudest things first. And what I want the loudest things to be in my beat is going to be the 808 and the kick. So what I'll do is... I'll put my master in solo, I mean in mono here. And you do that with this little knob. You want it to turn, uh, I believe it's purple and blue and orange. Yeah, purple and orange. Um, the purple side is mono, so that has everything kind of playing down the center. It's gonna sound like it's kind of almost coming out of one headphone almost. So when you do that, you can hear, in my opinion, you can hear it a lot better while you're mixing it. So I'll put it in mono, and then I'll just solo out the melody with the 808. Well, for in this in this case, I'm starting with the kick, so and it's gonna sound crazy, but it really helps you get a gauge. So on my uh, on my kick, I'm just gonna throw a soft clipper on it, nothing too crazy. And on my master, I also just have a soft clipper. So on my 808, I'm putting a fruity limiter. And I'm gonna use this max loudness except noise preset. And adjust the gain to my liking. Yeah. For this accent anyway, I'm not gonna actually put this one in mono because I kind of have it. Uh, actually, I don't even think I showed y'all. So, with that Yi 808, what I did here, if you go to control, hopefully, y'all can see this. Let me pull this up control here and note pan. You can adjust the pan of the notes in here. So, I kind of have these hitting in separate spots. So, I have it hitting on the left for this part, hitting on the right on this part left here and the right here so i'm not going to put that one in mono because mono like i said is going to send everything straight down the middle so i want that one to have that that uh dynamic range to it i guess so i'm leaving that one out of mono but we are going to throw a little soft clip on that thing
right, man. So next, let's get into the arrangement of things, man. So this is how I like to arrange my beats. I like to have a short eight bar intro. Nothing too long because you need to get the listener's attention, man. If you go to a studio and you sit in a session with an artist, trust me, I learned from experience. They're not finna sit there and want to listen to some crazy long intro, even if it's super hard. It's just, they just going to get bored of it, man. So you got to have your drop at a decent time. Don't get me wrong, though. Sometimes you need that intro to really set the vibe. But for the most part, man, if you're really trying to get artists on your stuff, you want that intro to come in pretty quick. And to be honest, an even better tip, if your beat start with the drums or at least the 808 hitting already right at the beginning, nine times out of ten, they're going to like the beat because a lot of people just like to hear that bass hit. But, man, that's neither here nor there. What we're going to do right here is we're going to have a little eight-bar intro. I'm going to uh, take this EQ down here. <laughs> I'm going to turn this knob to turn the EQ off. So what I'm going to do, because my boy Filthy got the sub bass going in here, and for this video, I'm not going to just go. He does have the stem separated, but I'm just going to go off this loop where he already has it arranged. I'm going to uh, right click the knob for the EQ and go to create automation clip. Actually, let me unhighlight that. All right. Right click, create automation clip. Boom. So now we have an automation clip of the EQ. So I don't want the EQ on at the beginning because I want his sub bass to come through. So what I'm going to do is right click here. It was gonna, it's going to create this little dot here. And I'm going to set that dot right there. We're going to right click another spot here. And we're just going to move it over and adjust it so that the EQ starts once the melody comes in right there. Boom. Perfect. So that way we have that sub bass at the beginning. And anywhere after that where the sub bass is playing, it's going to be EQ'd out. So... <laughs> Okay, so we're actually going to start it like this, I think. And this is technically going to be the hook in this section here. So that's what we're thinking of when we're laying this out right now. So I want it to come in with most of the sounds, no kick. The 808 and the second 808, no kick. Yep, so I wanted to hit like that. So, in the second half of the hook, we're gonna throw that kick in there. Okay, I'm rocking with that. So I don't know if you heard here at the end, when it goes from this 808 back into the sub bass, there's like a little bit of a muddy tail. You hear how the sub bass and the 808 clashes right there. So if you want to fix that, I'll show you how. There's a few ways you can do that. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to go into your 808. Go to this little envelope knob here. I mean, envelope setting. And you're going to change these, turn the attack down, turn the hold all the way up, decay down, sustain down, and the release down. So basically what that does is it makes it so that however long your 808 note is, that's how long it's going to play. So if I press Control L here and lengthen out all these notes, however long this 808 note is, that's how long it'll play. So for example, boom, let's say we shorten that. You see how it cuts off immediately? But if I stretch it out, the longer I stretch it, the longer it plays. 
So once you've done that and you have these settings here, it's gonna get rid of that tail whenever it goes back into the sub base. No clash right there. So that's how you can fix that pretty easily. Um, now I think what I'm also gonna do because it's kind of awkward right there, how it ends, I'm gonna make this unique and we're gonna finish this pattern out with something else. So let's see here. Matter of fact, we'll just do a whole new pattern for the verse. So let's do it like this. Yeah, we'll do it like this. So we're going to make an adjustment there. this uh, kick a little bit sometimes with the kick if you feel like if you feel like it's not hitting right on your 808 if you go into your kick and reverse the polarity that might get it to hit a little harder so example so that's really the text but that's just something else you can try there so let's see what we're sounding like here